Talk to him. Hi, Tana Hoy. Thank you for joining us. Hi, how are you doing? Good. 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 How are you today? Good. Good to see you, ladies. Good to see you as well. We're glad that we were able to set this up and have you on We Talk Back. I'm AJ. And I'm Tam Bam. And we need you. <laughs> 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 I definitely need you. I have so many. Well, that's great. So are you are you open to doing readings today at all? I do want to talk about you and all that good stuff as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm open to doing readings. Absolutely. It hasn't been long, it's been a long time since I've been wanted by two ladies. So this is a real treat for me. <laughs> we usually charge. Yeah, it's not for us. We usually charge. <laughs> In that case. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about you like when did you feel like you had psychic ability <laughs> My blind, or when did you you know discover your ability yeah I was born with the ability I I'm what's called a psychic and I'm also a medium and people think of the word medium to mean like somebody that only talks to the dead and that's actually a misconception a medium <clears throat> a psychic of course is somebody that has psychic ability. So I have the ability to see the future. I'm what's called clairaudient, which means I see, or clairaudient, which means I can hear the voices of the spirit world. I'm clairvoyant, which means I can see visions of the future and the past. And I'm clairsentient, which means that I can feel feelings and impressions of energy and from people. So that's the psychic part. The medium part means when, when we think of mediums, we, on TV, people were so used to thinking about only dealing with people who have died. And actually that's not, that's really kind of far from the whole picture. A medium means somebody that's actually a medium between the earth, the earth and the spirit world. So the medium's right here. So it means to be the medium in between. That's where the word medium comes from. Right. So a medium is just a voice for the spiritual world. So I work with over 350 spirit guides, guardian angels and ascended masters that's where I get my information from. Now I can talk to loved ones who have died because they're part of the spiritual, the spirit world. But the uh, <clears throat> that a medium doesn't just have the ability to just speak to people who have died. Uh, a, a true medium would have the ability to speak also to angels and other beings, master, ascended masters, and spirit guides. So what would you? What so you I discovered. Hmm? No, I was just going to ask, what do you prefer to go by? Because I know some people disguise like the term psychic. Um, oh no, I go, but I'm a psychic and that's what I call myself. I don't call myself a psychic medium because it confuses people and right. they think I just want to talk to the dead. So I'm a psychic and I'm also have the gift of mediumship, the ability to talk to the other side. So when I do a reading with somebody, 350 of my spirit guides, angels, and send them as they kind of materialize in front of me. And if I do a reading for you today, if you can see spirit guides and angels, you'll see them standing all around me. If not, you won't see anything. But if a person has the gift to see that, uh, they can see them around me. So I, that's where I get my information from. And to answer your question, I was born with my psychic ability. I never really developed it. I don't remember a time that I didn't have psychic ability. With my gift, I can physically see guardian angels, spirit guides, and ascended masters as clearly as I can see you sitting there. So I've always had the vision to see them. As a kid, it used to be hard to distinguish between people right. and spirit guides and angels, especially when we went to the mall at Christmas time. I saw Indians and cowboys and all kinds of people, and then other people walking around in regular clothes. And it took me a long time to learn how to distinguish them by their, because of their clothing. But as a young boy, I didn't understand that. So I've had it all my life. When I was about 10 years old, uh, with the permission of my parents, I was taken under the wings of one of the most uh, knowledgeable masters, master teachers in the world. He was a master teacher of an ancient Egyptian mystery school. And he actually mentored me in the, in the ancient Egyptian teachings of these mystery schools for 14 years until the day of his death. So while other kids were in school learning to make baking soda volcanoes and history, I was learning how to work with this, the, the psychic principles of the universe. So I didn't have a very good grade point average. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when you see uh, these spirits or are they behaving like they're alive or are they just there? Well, are they 
like in the mall where they actually stop and like, oh, it's a sale. Like, oh, right. no. well, when you use the word spirits, the word spirits refers to demons and demonic forces. And the word spirit, which is singular or plural, actually relates to angels and guides and positive energy. So I don't see spirits, but I, well, I've seen spirits, but I see spirit. I talk to spirit, which is kind of a difference. So an angel, it's not like TV, like where he says, I see dead people, you know, it's not, gonna it's not that kind of stuff. It's, you know, a loved one. If I see somebody who's died, they look exactly the same. I mean, I, if you look scary when you're living, you go look scary when you're dead. And I met some scary looking living people. So they, you know, they still look the same, but they, they look just like they did when they were living. And then guardian angels, they're beautiful. Just like the pictures, they have these beautiful wingspans and they have these beautiful glows around them of white light and blue light. So they're very beautiful. And ascended masters are also, you know, they, they, they have very different looks and depending on who the ascended master is, but they have, it's a very spiritual feeling. It's not scary. I'm not, I'm not talking about seeing demons and things with horns out of their head. That's not the kind of stuff that I okay. see, but <laughs> things that are of a very positive and white light. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't deal in all that other stuff. Do you feel like that other stuff exists simultaneously? No, I really don't. Um, I think that other stuff has been, we've been led to believe that it exists. I know there's a lot of uh, uh, faiths and religious faiths out there that, that claim these exist. I've been doing this since I was a kid. I'm only 21. So I've been doing this for 21 years. That was a joke, actually. Oh, you are laughing. Good. I don't have my glasses on. I'm 21. I have to have glasses. Yeah, I'm only 21. So I've been doing it for 21 years. And in all my year, all my 21 years, I've never, I've never seen an evil force ever. And I've done over 100,000 readings. And, uh, and I've, I've, I've never seen a demonic force, anything evil. I've, I've seen evil people. I've, I've talked to evil people that are living. But as far as, you know, demons, no. And maybe it's, I've never seen them. But I also don't, oh, pardon sorry. me? No, I was going to say, oh, you're fine. Lay when we try to, do you, what do you think? Because that's, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Because I know some religions, especially in the Black community, they don't believe <clears> in, um, they believe in spirits, like you said, but they don't really believe in spirit. And um what do you what do you think about those people that think that this is like the devil's work type thing? Because I am the type of person I tell people I'm a witch all the time. Right. I definitely um, do crystals. I sage. I do all mm -hmm. of the spiritual. That's that's where I'm more aligned. But it feels good. Um, better yeah, than yeah, yeah. You know, religion. See, my mother. So she's an old black woman. Okay. <laughs> she was like, well, okay. Who right now? <laughs> don't don't bring that shit back to my house. Me. <laughs> so she's afraid and yeah. I was like there's nothing to fear okay there's nothing to fear so what would you say to people who have that type of thinking where they're afraid or have fear of well, the unknown actually you know well when people come to me I always tell them I can't resolve your religious beliefs or convictions or fears or phobias or hang-ups the thing that I know I wrote a eight-page paper about psychics in the bible and actually the Bible is very positive about psychics. It says there's nothing wrong with it. I could mm -hmm. go on and explain this. Most people don't research. They just listen to what their ministers or spiritual leaders tell them and they accept it as truth called the blind sheep syndrome. And mm -hmm. spiritual leaders know this and so do politicians. That's why they often spew out a lot of untruths. So they know people will just follow it and believe it without researching. And if you believe the person that's telling it, or the person telling it's an authority that people will naturally believe it. Absolutely. Just a psychological fact, right? right. So, but the, but the Bible does not speak anything about, the, about psychics, nothing at all. So they, uh, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of psychic uh, events in the Bible. Right. I've discovered that spiritual leaders will pick one line or phrase out of a Bible, and then they will claim that that's the truth, but they ignore all the lines before and all the lines after. And so I was on a reality show on um, uh, CMT. I don't really talk about it. You guys are lucky because it was such a horrible experience. I'll never do another reality show in my life. Don't recommend it to anybody watching. It's very cutthroat and competitive. So I was on this reality show and it was in a small town in Texas called Vega, Texas. 
And they had five churches. I think they were all Baptist churches, 900 people, tiny town. They had prophets in their church that were prophesizing of the Lord. That was okay, but I was of the devil. So I've discovered that if you're in the church and you're giving these psychic messages, then you're okay. If you're not, you're not in the church or you're not a Christian, in the Christian religion at least, then you're of the devil. And right. that's the only difference. I guess if I went to the church and said I was a Christian and used these abilities, I guess I'd be okay. <laughs> but as a friend of mine who's a well-known minister said to me one time, God speaks through many mediums and many people. So the voice and the information I get is all from a very positive spiritual force. Yeah, so I, believe- I tell people, research it yourself. Huh? I said, we create our own heaven. I mean, not heaven and hell. We create the evil. We create the good and we create the evil. Yeah. And I... I also believe energetically, I wasn't going to get this deep, but when you talk about demons and things, so you talk about energy and stuff, whatever we put energy into actually can appear. I really believe that these demons that people see, if enough people believe in a demon, there's enough energy out there to create this entity, this force through people's thoughts that people will see. I really believe that. Mm-hmm. And People that don't believe in it, they don't see it. But I think these forces can be created by fear and, and, and just by believing. I think if I believed in, you know, little green purple people that walked were an inch high and walked around like ants, I would eventually start to see them if I put enough energy into it. Right. Mm-hmm. I think I could create them with my, with my energy. So are, when you were a child, did you go to your mother? I still am a child. You mean? Oh, <laughs> early, Remember, I'm 21. <laughs> earlier in your childhood. <laughs> did you, did a few you, years ago when you were young, <laughs> younger. <laughs> Before you were born. Right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> did you Did you just go to your mom like, hey, mom, I see people. Did, did, did your mother see people all too? And she's like, oh, yeah, baby, that's. You know, that's what we do. Or how did that happen? Like, how what, what was the conversation? Well, my mother used to go to seances when she was young. She used to take me. And we went to this uh, spiritual camp. It's a psychic camp. Uh, and there aren't many of them around today. And this is actually where I met my mentor. My mom was inside the house of a psychic. It was summer. And I was sitting outside waiting for her. And there's where my mentor first met me was here. So my parents were, both of my parents were always very accepting. My parents weren't hippies. Like if you think of like a conservative businessman, you have my father. If you think of a liberal kind of Midwestern woman, you have my mother. But neither of them had any problems. I mean, they never treated me different. They never, I, my mother used to call me her special child. Mm-hmm. And they, so my mom and my family were familiar. My dad's aunt was very psyche. So they were familiar with this. So it wasn't an issue at home. I found what the hardest part was, I think growing up in school, I learned very quickly to keep my gifts kind of a secret because other kids would get scared of me or they didn't know how to handle it. So I learned very quickly to kind of keep that part of myself very separate at school. Yeah. So I know you said you would never do a, um, uh, uh, my brain goes away sometimes. You'll never (laughs) do another uh, reality TV show. I noticed you hadn't posted on YouTube in a very long time. So yes, and I'm getting ready to post again right now. I'm starting to post. I've been. (laughs) I thought you disappeared to like recharge because you've been giving. No, no, no. Actually, I got complacent and lazy. You know, it was like I didn't. I I didn't put videos on there because I I have. I'm so busy with my practice and my clients and I just never thought about it. And recently I just got a little spark. I got a little flame up my ass, excuse my French about two days ago. And YouTube sent me something and said, hey, if you don't, it's okay, but we haven't seen you in a while. So actually I'm creating videos again now and I'm gonna be posting more regularly to people. Actually, I like videos. So I just got kind of lazy and, and busy. (laughs) <laughs> so let me tell you this my oldest- the reality show just by the way that's not on there i have buried that you won't you'd have to really search hard to find that show <laughs> i don't even talk about it i'm surprised i'm even telling you about it but we have this <laughs> demon stuff and you brought up that story of it reminded me of mega texas oh my gosh i'll need a therapy session after this <laughs> 
so, like um, my I'm older crazy. sister, she always talks about, she says that she died on the Titanic. My older okay. sister. She feels like, she's like, ever since I was a child, I've always felt this connection to this boat. <clears throat> I had scary dreams of my lungs filling up with ice cold water. Like as a little girl, even though I never was in water, every time I see any documentary about the Titanic, I'm automatically drawn to it. And I would say to her, girl, shut the hell up. You don't know what you're talking about, right? <laughs> That's how I would, you know, growing up. But as I get older now, I, I start to maybe consider that it is true. So I'm asking yeah. you, do you believe in uh, having <clears throat> past lives? Absolutely. Uh, I actually had a past life memory and uh, I had a past life memory and, and, and I, I've only had one, it's called spontaneous memory. So what your sister's having, she's having actual memories. And <clears throat> I believe it's true what she's saying because without even knowing her, when you say she said she was on the Titanic, it sounds like she's very specific about she knows exactly where she was on the Titanic mm -hmm. and that's how she died. And that's very common with past lives, absolutely. I don't believe in past lives. I know for a fact that past lives exist, are real. But I interviewed, a, I had a radio show for a while and I interviewed this author about uh, past lives. And what she said to me was, past lives, for people that believe in reincarnation or believe in past lives, it's a great theory. You know, it, they have faith and they believe in it, but maybe they're not really sure. Hold on, but a person who has had a past life experience <laughs> or memory, what'd you say? My dog is like really snoring. Bella. Oh, well, my cat will run on me maybe in a minute. So that's great. We got pet smells. And up. so she had, uh, she said, but when a person has a past life memory, then they know it's real. They, they don't, they, they know for sure. And, and it was way before that. I mean, she told me that was a couple of years later that I had that experience and I understood it. But definitely, absolutely, I believe in it. Yeah. Okay. I, I you know, I, she would she would say that when we were little girls, and I would just think like, Mama needs to take my sister to the therapist. That's what I would think. Mm -hmm. when, yeah, but as an adult, I you know, I now I really consider it. I do. I yeah, think I may have even have. I, I I think I may even have memories of a past life. I don't know. Maybe I know I've been here before. I just have like. Here. <laughs> I have a connection with are you know those perfume bottles that have the ball on it? The yeah, yeah, perfume? yeah. If you're extra cute, girl. And then no, no, the <laughs> and the the silver comb and now all that old stuff. I just have such an affinity for it. I feel like I've owned them before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be like a past life. Mm -hmm. And what you can do <clears throat> is you can do a search on Google about when those were popular and then kind of compare to your age now. And you'll kind of get an idea of like, say they were there in the fifties or whatever, that'll give you, a, if you do that research and you look, you might find more memories coming. You might start more, find more coming from you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know, if you told me, if a person said that I think I've lived before and I have an affinity to Xbox, well, Xbox <laughs> is of this generation, right? So right. it wouldn't make logical sense. Right. But if a person's having an affinity to something that's not within their time era, that right. can make sense. Because when we die, there's no set rule of when you reincarnate. Yeah. You could reincarnate right away. You could right. be reborn. You could be reborn 20 years, 30 years later. That's, that's something that we don't really know why and how that happens. But so as long as it's something you have an affinity to before you wouldn't have been when you were living, absolutely that can make sense. I had a past life, I had a past life memory and I was a little girl in Vietnam and I lived in this dirt floor and I remembered looking up at these Americans. I saw these white GI guys, white guys that I was this little girl and really dirty in this dress. I had this vision and they were, and but I thought that they were, you know, I looked at them as these rich, wealthy, you know, Americans. I don't know why I was thinking that. And then I thought, well, when were, um, but I thought, hmm, I don't know, were there ever, so I know my age, 21, right? So mm -hmm. when I was born, I thought, well, when I was born, I, were there troops in Vietnam? You know, could this really, so I actually found out that there had been troops in Vietnam since the middle 50s. So it was perfect, and I didn't even know that. 
And then actually I had this vision. I ended up actually going to Vietnam on this vision to mm. find this life. And, uh, and I did, <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. But I had a very strong vision and I cried and I cried. And my, my, my boyfriend at the time, we've been there about four years. He didn't really believe in, he didn't know this stuff was real reincarnation or not. When he came home from work and I was on the bed sobbing like my, my mother had died. He came in, he was freaked out. What's wrong? What's, it was so painful, this memory. Because I remember thinking, what have I done? And for a short time, I didn't think that I belonged here. And I realized as a little girl, because I was so poor, I saw these Americans and I thought they were rich. And I decided to come and be born as a Caucasian male in this lifetime in America, because I thought that would make me rich. And that's why I said, <laughs> oh my next. God, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try that one out next, honestly. <laughs> Oh, it's not true. But you know, if you're a little girl in Vietnam and you're poor and you see, you know, the ideas of Americans and what people would tell, will say, you know, that made sense to me. I was, I got this idea that that was what wealth was. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of people come here to this country, find out that's not true, but they, you know, that's a, that's a misconception a lot of people have about America. What does this mean? When I was younger, that doesn't happen to me anymore. But I, anytime I would have dreams, I could, I could feel myself coming back and then my eyes would open and I would wake up. It Astral doesn't happen, travel. But as a child, always, every day, every night, especially Saturdays, I can just remember like- What do you mean how feel Saturday. yourself coming back? And you, it's like, I was out, you outside like you, of my body. And I yeah, yeah. And I would- That's called astral travel. And what happens is we have a, we have an exact, we have an, a physical body, and then we have what's called an astral body. It's called astral travel or astral projection. So astral. our astral body is an exact replica of our physical body. And when we sleep, not everybody does this, but it's not, if you have a dream ever that you're flying, you're astrally traveling. Not in a plane, but I mean, you feel like you're flying and like a bird, that's astral traveling. So what happens is we, we detach and leave our body, our astral body, it's connected by what's called a silver cord that's part of our, 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 comes from our energy body. And then we go out there and we float all over the world and we travel around. And then when you wake up, you come back. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever, if a person has ever been sleeping and all of a sudden they just wake up suddenly, it's just like, bam. That's uh, how it would always be. Yeah, you're, you're literally crash landing. You're just slamming, <laughs> crash landing back in your body. It's just your, some, if you hear a noise and you're out trastily traveling and something startles you, you'll have a sudden like that kind of wake up. Sometimes it's because be you're out of your body somewhere. Feeling just like this, slowly. Yeah. Well, if you're doing it slowly, that means you're returning back. You weren't you weren't having a crash, a slam landing. That's the best way. You know, when before you wake up, you're just returning back to your body. I bet you still do that now. You just may not pay attention to it or remember it as much. Before you go to sleep at night, I, what I'd like you to do is start saying, I would like to remember my astral travels. Just kind of say that to yourself and it will plant it in your subconscious and you'll find that you'll start remembering it. Because if you are doing it whenever in your life, it doesn't just go away. We might just get used to it or we might not realize it any longer. So I have a crazy question. There's no, believe me, darling, I can assure you whatever you ask me is not crazy compared to the things I've heard. <laughs> My grandma see me giving head. <laughs> Your grandma what? <laughs> She's gone now. Can she see me giving head? Like, can she see but, me? You know, darling, that's like, get asked stuff her like that all the time. <laughs> You're being very Christian about it, how you're asking. I've, I've had it ask in much more descriptive terms. Than my clients, what I love about my clients, my God, they talk to me just like I'm their best. I mean, I am their best. They just feel so comfortable to talk to me. They don't monitor their language. They, when they talk about sex, they don't say making love. I mean, they, they just give me all the details. I'm like, God bless your soul. I'm glad you're happy you're that comfortable with me. If that means people feel comfortable. I want to be like that with people. So about the given head thing, no, your grandma, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I definitely, I'm a psychic, right? But if I was, 
yeah, I'm not virginal and I don't see anything wrong with words like that. But anyway, so no, she doesn't. I, you know, that's an interesting question that people ask. I had a woman ask me one time when my husband is performing oral sex on me, does my grandma see it? She asked me that exact same thing. And that's a really, a lot of people ask me that when we're having sex, does my mom see us? I had one client that she was a dominatrix and she said, oh, I hope my mom doesn't see my mom. Her mom died, said, does my mom see me? I said, no, she said, thank God. She never knew I was into this and she'd be shot. I didn't even want to go there and ask any more questions about that. <laughs> so the, the truth is, you know, they're, they're, I have all kinds of clients. And so the truth is, though, that no, they don't, because there's a privacy thing. Like when we're making love or we're being sexual or having sex with someone we love or even someone we just met, they do not come in and, and, uh, and impose on us. That'd be kind of creepy. Yeah. No, that's just well, naturally no. built in. So one time I was having sex with uh, this guy I was dating at the time. This is like 10 years ago now, but his cousin committed suicide um, maybe a year prior. And his door, like the door was a heavy door. It couldn't open or close by itself. It was yeah. not that swing. And the door kept opening and closing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So we just assumed maybe it was his, his cousin. cousin was trying to have a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> that that could have been, been the case. <laughs> I'm talking all the ghosts. Wouldn't too. have been very satisfying. <laughs> it would have been just air, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, minutes. see, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're so stupid. Did you hear her? What she did said, I miss? She said 40 ghost dollars. <laughs> 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 40 good luck spending them <laughs> you have to take them with you when you're a ghost one day when you're no longer here because i don't know any place you, you get money from the like, country you just hold on to it <laughs> it's not a cryptocurrency maybe that's astral <laughs> currency or ecto currency or something <laughs> so the the interesting thing about what people get freaked out about and that's a really good point about the door so when we die, we're still made of energy. We're made of energy. Yes. We're in, I can see them. I can see dead people. Uh, I get scared as hell of like I am not scared of ghosts. I used to do ghost hunting, and and I went in. The, I was in a group for ghost hunting, and I saw all kind of things. As long as it's in front of me, I'm not scared. If I can see you, I'm not scared. But you know, if I'm on a ghost hunt and something taps me on the back, it scares the hell out of me. Because if anybody comes up and tries to tap me on the back. It scares me. But as long as I can see them, they don't bother me. The thing about ghosts is when you like, when people have, a, they, they call them hauntings. And, and that's kind of a, it almost sounds like a scary word. But if you really break it down to a simplest form, when we die, we're made of energy. Death is nothing more than the physical body, the, the spiritual body leaving the physical body. Because we're spiritual beings having a physical experience. Because of reincarnation, we're reborn into these bodies. So we're spiritual beings having a physical experience. We are not physical beings having a spiritual experience, mm -hmm. which implies that, you know, it's all over at the end because we come into this body. So Albert Einstein said, when, ener when energy doesn't, doesn't go away, it doesn't, he said, dissipate, doesn't disappear, doesn't go away, it just changes form. Scientifically, we know that we're made of, I forget what percentage of energy, 80%. When we die, if energy doesn't change, it doesn't disappear, it just changes form, that energy goes. And that's the soul. That's the part that's reincarnated. So when you're in an energy body, when you're, when you're in your, your spiritual body, you can move things. You can, you can move things. You can drop I things over. Time. Pardon me? <laughs> I try all the time to move things. Well, and also I, like, the, like the static cling. Like I'm like, right. you build up enough to right. like chuck my fiance right Right. <laughs> but see, if, if you saw that door, if you could have seen his brother standing there and you, you would have seen him opening and closing that door, it wouldn't have been scary. But because most people can't see them, <laughs> It looks like something air just, it just looks like yeah. the door is moving, but it's right. not. There's like, okay. a being there moving it. No. Same as something falls off your shelves. No one just, it been scared. it's if just I some, saw, if you could see it somewhere there, knocked it over. <laughs> if I saw a brother that I knew had passed away, open the door, I would have been scared. And I would have wanted my $40. <laughs> 
but <laughs> your 40 ghost dollars how much time we have with 40 you ghost dollars. <laughs> i don't know how much time we have with you but i definitely want to get some readings in <laughs> oh you can't definitely you got you got me as long as you need me oh really okay now yeah <laughs> so you might have to are... serve me some food because something tells me i can already tell you guys are one of you are a really good cook both of us really but i cook really she's well. probably the best cook uh know. i'm coming over for dinner Come, I have a food truck coming, Trap Veggie. All right, right. <laughs> Fantastic. So you wanted a reading. I'll tell you a little bit. So Tam Bam. Yes. And how do you spell your name? AJ. Ashley, but I go by AJ. AJ. It's not A-Y-J-A-Y, nothing fancy. It's just A and J. <laughs> Is that right? AJ yep. and Tam Bam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you something, AJ. It's very in. You're not in a relationship at the moment. I am. Okay, let me go back. Let me ask this differently. <laughs> Are you happy in this relationship at the moment? Sometimes. Pardon me? Sometimes. Are you 100% fulfilled? Couldn't be happier in this relationship? No, we, if, we, if this is going to be the conversation, we got to hurry up before he comes home. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, well, I'm just going to ask you because I'm straight up. You hear me? I'm kind of a truth teller. Because what I'm getting, see, when I say a relationship, to me, I think of a relationship as a really like a soulmate kind of connection. And one of the things that I hope this is okay, but I, you didn't really ask me a question. You said I wanted to read it. I've just gone to what I picked up. And so there's some things that you two need to work out between you two. Mm -hmm. There's still some things. Do you understand that? Mm, very much so. And some things sexually that you need to work out too. Interesting. <laughs> you don't have to say anything, but you. you does this, no, look, does this, are you, you are, <laughs> pardon you me? Rubbing a damn <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, like, tell me, tell me a little bit more, like some things sexually, like more sex, less sex, or no sex. Yeah, maybe more. Maybe more or maybe different. Or maybe some things he doesn't do that you'd like him to do. Or maybe doesn't do it the right way. Interesting. This is, do you understand that? Yes. All that I'm going, all that it needs to be is conversation. I feel like he cares about you. But, you know, I think when it comes to, see, we talk about sex. When it comes to sex, I think we expect you to read our minds sometimes. I think it's okay to say, I like this, I like that, a little harder here, a little softer here, those kind of things. And just have conversations with him about right. this. So my, I don't have, we never have a problem with communication is comprehension a lot of times. So we okay. Well, I can tell everything I don't like, what I do like is like, if the person isn't comprehending what you're saying or doesn't care to comprehend it, then what? Well, in other words, you're dealing with the male. And I can say that I'm a male. You're dealing with the typical male mind. I mean, what I tell my female clients is if you want to talk to an adult, you call your girlfriend. If you want to talk to a child, you call your husband or your boyfriend. <laughs> so it's one of those things where you're really dealing with our minds are a little different. Well, you have to tell men, you have to tell us, I can say this because I'm male, you have to tell us <laughs> more than once. <laughs> and part of it with him, it'll get very frustrating, but I can tell you that he does love you. And I would tell you that his not always remembering isn't a sign of his not caring. He does care about you. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you two didn't get married. Well, we're engaged, but it's real the thin ice. We're on a, we're on That's a why I say get power. married, because I can feel that it's what you call thin ice. And there have been questions in your mind but you two are gonna work this out, definitely. The Archangel Michael is standing right behind you over your left shoulder. I'm trying to figure out the, the way I'm looking, over your left shoulder there. Mm -hmm. And he's telling me that it's gonna work out. You two were in a past life. In this past life in your relationship, you were the man and he was the woman and you did the exact same thing to him. So <laughs> you're just coming back in this life and you're kind of experiencing it back. It's not punishment, it's just part of the learning process. So he was patient with you in that life. You gotta be patient with him a little bit in this one. I do feel that 
he's a good mix for you, a good fit. And I feel that if you two work out your differences, he's not perfect and you're not perfect. You just got to control your, your tongue a little bit. Because sometimes you say things, you got to control your mouth. I just want to say like, you're some, you know, you're like a cat or okay, not a cat. So. You're like a leopard, you know, boom, you can pounce right on somebody and that's okay. But it's <laughs> like, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? Yes. Saying, saying, saying. That's yeah. 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 I mean, something. someone does says something to you. I'm you're not like a cat. And you... I don't have like a split personality thing, but no, my personality depends on you. Yeah, but you can get triggered. So yes, I'm like, very I much. Feel like a, a cat goes, wait a minute, I hear my earpiece. Can you can you hear me okay? Yes. Is the sound still okay? So sound good? Yes. Okay. So like a cat, a cat goes, meow, but a cougar goes, <laughs> so you can be like the, <laughs> and then, whoa, where'd that come from? So, you know, you and that's okay. That's part that's part of who you are and that's part of what makes you who you are. And that's part of what's going to lead you to your continued success. But just give him a little bit of a break because I, I think that he, he, he cares about you. You're also going to reach your dream. You've got some dreams in this entertainment realm or world that you're going to accomplish. You've just got to be patient with yourself. At times, here's what I'm hearing to tell you. At times it can be frustrating and sometimes you wonder if you if it's even worth it. But keep plotting on. It's going to lead to your dreams. Hey. I like Ignore it. the BS and the dysfunction and <laughs> just keep moving forward being you. And I know that makes sense to you. Yes, very much so. I know. They're talking to me like they're just chatting up a storm. <laughs> That makes me feel good. That is good. Don't tell me nothing just to make me feel good now. Well, I'm not telling you to make you feel good. I mean, I didn't I was, didn't want to tell you you're like a cougar, but not a cougar well, like I want, older I want a baby yeah. sometime. I'm am I going to get a baby at some point? You see any kids? Just one. Yeah, I do see a baby. Um You have you have two. <laughs> They're not twins. Do you have a child now? No, I don't. I have two future stepchildren. He has two children. Yeah, there's going to be two. If you two decide to have a child together, you will. It'll be a boy. But there's two children, two right now, already two. That's why I'm like, are these hers? Where are these come from? Yeah, you're going to have to, you two are getting married. Yeah, there'll be three. But three boys? No, 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 no. Does no. he have two boys? He has two boys. Now, I can't choose what they decide to do, you know, when you're getting pregnant. <laughs> it'll be three boys. <laughs> my mother had three boys and she loved it well, yeah I'll and take one of them will be anything is healthy huh <laughs> right. I said, anything. one of them will be very psychic the one that's born between you two will be very psychic mm. you two were sisters in a past life I don't know how you met how you guys came together but you, you two had a good relationship in a past life. Yeah. <laughs> You'll probably fight like sisters sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, boyfriend and girlfriend. Yes. Pardon me? <laughs> she always tells me I'm a man. I act like a man. Well, yeah, they, they, well you were you were the you were Wait, women in your past <laughs> lives together. And you were, you know, that's just your personality, right? <laughs> I act like a man. I love that. <laughs> I guess it's like someone tell me you act like a woman. I wouldn't bother me. I'm like, eh, oh, whatever. In today's society, I can act however I want, thank God. But so that's not a bad thing. I think she just say, you know, that's just that's just funny because I could just feel he she tells me I act like a man. It's just your voice that I can really feel how that makes you feel when she says that. Like it's kind of annoying. The cougar over there, she's hitting you with your paw and kind of getting on I your nerves that. sometimes. I do do that to my friend. I'm working on my anger. I don't have anger issues. I'm it's very not anger. It's not anger. It is like you're an OBS kind of person. Yeah. If you sense BS from somebody, you're gonna call them out. You won't, uh, you won't put up with it. I mean, you're going to be the kind of person if you're in the store and, or even your neighbor and they come over and tell you something, you know, not true. You wouldn't have anything. That's not true. You'd have, if you know, wasn't true, you'd have no problem calling out anybody if they were just making crap up. Cause that will drive you crazy. You Sometimes can't stand people. people. Lying, so they have yeah. to keep explaining it to me. <laughs> then you can't I'll call stand people that lie or make stuff up. 
-hmm. You're just going to be like, if you don't know, just say it. Don't make, say, I don't know. Don't make stuff up. People that make stuff up when they don't know will drive you through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> so am I going to get a man? <laughs> you are going to get a man. Now, you're not with anybody right now. No, not, not for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some men are for boy toys mm -hmm. and some men are for keeps. Mm -hmm. Just make sure to keep the boy toys as boy toys and don't think they're going to be, a boy toy does not ever turn into a prince. Mm -hmm. And a prince doesn't turn into a boy toy normally. Mm -hmm. So just remember that some boys are for playing and some boys are for keeping. But I do see somebody coming into your life. See, this is, I'm looking up because I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not trying to be rude. This is a, so this is March 4th, mm -hmm. <clears throat> about 12 to 14 months. Between now, 12 to 14 months, you're going to meet a guy. He's tall. He's, you like tall guys, don't you? I do. Yeah, because they tell like tall guys. He's tall. Um, how do, I don't know. Why are they telling me this? Um, he's got what it takes to satisfy you. He's got a big old dick. <laughs> that, that's they're. they're just telling me so that, like that, the uh, that is an attribute that you like. And Both. <laughs> How much money he got though? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's going to definitely satisfy you. And well, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Most men don't really sexually satisfy you. That's true. There's most men, you might just have to pretend sometimes. That You've never true. been with somebody that really knew how to please you. And that's going to be so important. You couldn't be, you could care about someone, you could love someone, but if they can't satisfy you sexually because sex is a part of bonding mm -hmm. it, it just ain't going to go anywhere it ain't going to go anywhere this man is going to make your toes curl okay. i don't know if your hair is normally straight or curly but he's going to make your hair curl uh -uh. And if your hair was curly he's going to make your hair go straight it was you your hair goes straight he's going to make your hair go curly and and it, it's just you're going to be really really he's a gentleman He's somebody, so you need somebody, you, you will put on a tough front, but you're really very sensitive. People that know you may be surprised how sensitive you really are because you're a very sensitive person. And so you need a man that is going to treat you, you know, men that you've dated that expected you to be the man and the woman. Mm -hmm. And you need a man, you know, to, to take over and, and you need a man that treats you, allows you to be who you are to be your strong assertive self, but also recognizes your femininity and knows how to treat you like a lady. Most men you've dated have missed the lady part with you. That's true. That's very you, true. Yeah. You need somebody that will open your door, help you with the coat on, brings you flowers, somebody that, and will treat you like an equal, cannot talk down to you. You've been involved with some real losers. I'm just going to say it. Now, they haven't been, uh, you've shortchanged yourself. <laughs> you better get those ghost dollars back because <laughs> <laughs> if you had to pay them in ghost dollars, I mean, you got shortchanged. But this noob, this guy is coming. He's going to be really, really, he might be a professional athlete. Oh my God. Sounds great. <laughs> Oh my God. You might be a basketball player. Do you know some basketball players? I mean, friends that are professional. I do know. Interesting. A couple professional basketball players. <laughs> I know. Because they just told me, you know, some basketball players, professional. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're going to, I'd be hanging around with them. They're going to introduce you to somebody. Mm. So he, the money is not, he's going to be rich. But you'll never know it. You'll never, this guy is very low key, very down to earth. He wasn't raised with a lot of money. So he doesn't, money doesn't define him. He's just a nice guy with a lot of money. Sounds good. And you're going to like him. Yes. And he is, who's that really? There's this really cute basketball player. I can't remember his name, but he's got light skin. He's got like green eyes and he's mixed. And he's got uh, like- Steph Curry, you talking about? 
Huh? Like Steph Curry? Is that who you're thinking about? I don't know. There was this one guy that's like, oh my God, I didn't know basketball players were so handsome. He is really <laughs> handsome. Uh, I think he was dating one of the Kardashians. Oh, Was there a light-skinned uh, athlete dating one of the, the Courtney or not Courtney, one of those? I forgot. And it was dating her. Mm-hmm. I can tell I you. I think that's who it was. He was so, he, at least he was my type. He was really handsome. But you're going to this guy is really you're gonna have beautiful babies let me just say that oh that sounds good i'm gonna have a baby yeah Yeah. and i'm told your mother will approve that's good that's good to hear because my mom doesn't like anybody that i I know that's why i said that they said your mother is going to approve yeah i know she doesn't like anyone that's why she's like they're gonna she's gonna approve (laughs) <laughs> well that sounds good because yeah, she's gonna like him because he's gonna treat her he's gonna make such a good impression on him she's gonna be smitten with this guy <laughs> the money <laughs> <laughs> does that make any sense though what i'm telling you guys does this can you place this i definitely can place this. pardon me that sounds good that sounds does good. it make sense what i'm telling you it does it does make sense and for you aj yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, you came out with the things that are on my mind daily. Good, good. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to be so personal, but stuff just comes through to me and I just have to, you know, put it out there. But you are, AJ, you're going to accomplish the financial success you want through your career. Tam Bam, you're going to accomplish the financial success you want through your husband. <laughs> <laughs> what? Right. am i getting out of the game <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it means it just means you're going to shortcut it's like you're still going to do what you do and you're going to go on and have a successful career but you won't need to it'll be you'll work because you want to not because you have to god damn <laughs> yeah well you're going to do fine naturally you're already on the you're already and you can call me tana you're already on the right path <laughs> You're already on the path to accomplishing your dreams. I have a question. Yes. Does, does my sometimes I'll be home and I can smell my grandmother. Yeah. Perfume or what do you smell? It's all right. She used to <clears throat> use stuff called Azorbent Junior, and it was yeah. like like a oil, not an oil. It was like, like oil alcohol. Or something. Yeah, oil. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just smell it randomly. Yep. 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 That's very common. There's a name for that. Ola, I can't, I can't think of the name. There's a, there's like Clarison, there's a name for that. There's a, actually a psychic term for that. It's Ola something. But anyway, I don't use it a lot, that term. I just, I didn't really know there was a term till a couple of years ago, but it's Ola something. And it means to, that you can, when you, it's very common when loved ones are around uh, not, I know I should say this again. It's not very common. It's actually very special that you have that experience. And it's very special that you uh, recognize it. Because imagine if you had that smell as your grandmother, but you never even connected it. You'd, not, you'd miss the experience of your grandma knowing she's there. So <clears throat> it's, it's not uncommon to smell if, they, if a person smoked a pipe, to smell their pipe tobacco. Or to smell a very common two things, tobacco or cigarette smoke, if they smoked. And the other one is cologne or perfume. Mm -hmm. So that is your grandma there. Because if you look around, probably you don't even have that perfume in your house. And excuse me, it would make no sense where it's coming from. That's your grandma. You're smelling her perfume. She's there visiting you. Just say hi. Just day, say hi, hi, oh, grandma. Yeah, grandma. I know you're here. Like, the other day, yeah. I was like, I can smell my like the stuff my grandma and, and I knew we were gonna have a good day. Yeah. Did yeah. you smell it too, or you didn't smell it? No, I didn't smell it because I wouldn't know what to smell for. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, I just felt like okay, we'll have a good day then. And well, we it's interesting that you were both in the room. I've never asked anybody if the other person smelled it. That's why I was asking because it would make sense to me that only the person that it was connected to would smell it. Although I have heard of people, I've read of people where there was pipe smoke or something where other people in the room could smell it. So I wouldn't be surprised if you, you, you might smell it sometime too, but that is your grandma. You might not, doesn't mean anything either way, but it could, that could also be the case. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, that's yeah. good to hear. Last question. Well, you can <laughs> ask me anything. There's no limit. You've got 30 more ghost dollars with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you located? Uh, San Diego. Okay. Is that what yeah. Right now. Is it beautiful? Right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, like 74, 75. Jealous. Okay, so there was this documentary I was watching called um, Surviving Death on Netflix. I don't know. Yeah. But they were talking about mediums. They were talking about uh, past lives. They were talking mm-hmm. about who died and came back and um, what they experienced. And then they were also talking about where they were having seances and like the, the person who was like giving the seance would have this protoplasm, photoplasm, ectoplasm ectoplasm coming that's why i said ectocurrency sorry ectoplasmic currency i meant yeah yeah what i was joking earlier so so what is that because it just looked like something from a scary movie and not something that exists ectoplasm is an energy substance that is exuded comes out of a medium comes out of their what's called their solar plexus chakra we have what are called chakras that run along our spine and there's seven of them they're energy centers and each one correlates to a physical spiritual and emotional function of our body mm-hmm. your aura have you ever heard of your aura it's an energy field that surrounds your body it's got your thoughts feelings and emotions projected onto it looks like a rainbow or it can be different colors that is an energetic extension of your soul and that energy comes out of your solar plexus right here if that's that's this is the this is the chakra your care bear responsible <laughs> yeah. the ec- pardon me i said your care bear jewel oh okay yeah 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 and so ectoplasm also exudes out from this part of the medium so <clears throat> it, ectoplasm is a very interesting thing because um it, it comes out of the medium it can do many things it can it can be used to lift things it can be used for a lot of different things but yeah ectoplasm mm-hmm. do you so you believe that to be real and it's not just real. um yes there yes i believe it's real i don't believe it's real with every single person mm-hmm. but i do believe it's very real i'm a medium so i've i've got a lot of the gifts that you saw in that show um so yes it's real but there's but it's not always real you just really have to you have to consider who the person is you have to make sure that it's a reputable person uh you don't want to just go to anybody for a seance because there's there's a lot of trickery also out there so okay i said that was my last question but i have one more (laughs) you can ask all you want you can you know there was there was a spiritualism which is a religion of uh, spiritualists believe that life after death is a fact and that they can prove it through seances, through talking to the dead, through things like ectoplasm, and what exudes from mediums, right? Back in the 1940s, there were 6,000 spiritualist churches in the United States. Today, there's less than, I think, 500 or 300. There was so much fraudulence in the religion that it died. So there I know it was through stuff like ectoplasm, people using trickery and stuff like that for, and it's a beautiful religion. It's probably what I probably most follow. It's a beautiful religion. So not, it's not, it is real, but if you go to a seance, make sure that you're, you go somewhere that it's, it's legitimate and spiritualism though, even though it's not alive in this country, it's still very much alive in England. Spiritual Spiritualism is a very big religion there. And you're going to find in England probably a, a lot of very reputable people. There's very reputable people here. Don't get me wrong. They're just, a lot of the mediums have died off, you know, they're old. And so there's just not many people doing seances. I do seances. I just don't do them for the public. I do them with a friend or people. I use them more for spiritual purposes, but they, uh, they, they're, they're very real. Yes, they're very real. My, um, I was watching one of your YouTube videos and you said that we are all psychics. Yes. So how, how would one channel their own psychic energy? <clears throat> Meditation. Yeah. So you can learn 
to you, if you really, depending on how serious, if you really want to learn to develop your psychic ability and people that learn to develop it, they don't do it. You know, you don't have to learn to develop it just to be a psychic. Learning to develop your psychic abilities, it gives you a lot of benefits in life because you can know when people are lying, you can feel things, you make better business decisions. You, a lot of things improve by being psychically tuned in and that's why most people do it. You have to find somebody, I have a six, I have a six month psychic certification course. Where I teach people one-on-one uh, -on -one and in groups how to develop their psychic ability. If you want to really learn how dependent, really learn how to develop it, then you're going to need a professional to teach you. Uh, if you want to just do it for fun or whatever, you can read books. There's a lot of good books out there. But what I tell people about psychic ability, it's kind of like riding a bike, right? You can, I can read a book on how to ride a bike and I can know how to ride a bike. But when I, to, to actually ride a bike, you need, I need another person to help me. They got to help me get on. They got to put on the training wheels. They got to stabilize me and teach me how to ride. And then when I get to a certain point, they got to take off the training wheels and hold the bike so I don't fall and at a certain point, let me go. That's stuff you can't do or learn on your own. So there is a certain point as in many things that you, you have to really, to be very good at it, you have to have somebody that knows what they're doing a professional teach you. So you don't Not just anybody, there's a lot of crazy, kooky psychics out there, there I said it. I don't have any psychic friends and the reason is because most of them are crazy and batshit. But, <laughs> so just be careful who you choose as psychics because you know, there were a crazy bunch of people. I'm not saying I'm not a little crazy at times, but believe me, I'm not that crazy. You're all a little bit crazy. No, I yeah. I'm a lot crazy, but I do tarot readings. Um, I go to like psychics. So I try to find them wherever I'm at. Or if I happen to, one day I was driving down, leaving my mom's house. And it was a sign that said, Ashley, psychic reading. So I said, well, obviously I'm supposed to stop this. this the lady's name was Ashley too, though. But do you use tarot cards and stuff like that? I don't, I don't need to use anything because I get my information from guides and angels. I have about 30 decks of tarot cards. I collect them and I like to read them and, and play with them, but they're not a, to me, it's a, it's a hobby. It's not because I can see guides like I was doing with you guys reading. I don't need anything. I don't even need to see you. I can just, when I, I don't even have to hear your voice. My guides just talk to me and they tell me things like they were, I just happen to be seeing you here. Uh, people that use tarot cards, it's a tool they use to get information from. But what happens when you use tools, they can be misinterpreted. Just like if you look at a map and you misinterpret it wrong, you can go the wrong direction. So the, the tarot cards are like a map. Whereas when I'm giving information, I think why my accuracy rate is, is so high. And what people always ask me, why is your accuracy rate so high? It's because I'm not interpreting information. You know, I was talking and just kind of what I'm seeing. I'm just repeating the conversation I hear in my head and I'm telling you, there's no interpretation. With tarot cards, you can, if you misinterpret it wrong, you give wrong information. And about this psychic, you, you just hit a, a big pet peeve of mine. Let me just make this very clear to anybody that sees this. If there ever is a sign out front that says psychic readings, palm readings, uh, Ms. whatever, run the <laughs> other way. Do not go in there. They're going to, oh, but they're, you get what you pay for. Well, I, and you know, the thing is, I, be, I believe that too. So I do. I don't mean Miss Ashley. I actually, I don't know if she's real or not. I don't know the sign. Oh. I'm just saying if they have neon, if they have a youth, Professional psychics don't advertise. These right. people, I have what they do is they tell you you've got a curse, yeah. you've got, you got to burn candles, it's going to cost a couple hundred dollars, it's not for me, it's for my church. Yeah. If you're searching online, they've got a godfather in New Jersey that bails them out. This is literally a mafia. It literally is. It's yeah. a mafia. I think that they tend to be, um, they're gypsies, but whatever, it's, Romanian. Yeah. I think it's a Romanian. I don't know exactly what culture. It's part of this specific culture. And they're con artists that act as psychics or some of them are psychics who have went to the dark side. So they can tell you things. Oh, but they told me this. They told me that. Yeah, and they also told you that it's going to cost you $2,000. 
the average client that I've ever talked to, if you get away from one of those people for less than $20,000, you are fortunate. So because a real psychic, first of all, they don't advertise, they don't put signs out front. The other thing is, if you come to me and I give you a reading and then oh, there's a curse and, and that's, they tell everyone they've got a curse. My God, everyone in the country must be cursed because that's what they tell everyone. So if you've got a curse on you, let's pretend you come to me and you've got a curse. I'm not going to charge you $200 to burn candles. I'm going to remove it during your session. That's what you paid me for. There's no extra charts like going to the doctor and saying, doctor, my legs broke. Whoa, whoa. Well, it's going to cost you more to set that bone. But if you want a Band-Aid or a cast, because the cast, now that's going to cost you another thousand dollars. Oh, it's not for me. It's for my charity. You know, right. you go to the doctor. I, they have you it. ever had someone come to you and you felt a curse on them or felt like real bad energy around them or just? Yeah, yeah. There are curses. I believe there's curses. I believe they tend to be mostly what's called a psychic curse. Because thoughts are energy. Remember I told we talked about we can create things, little green people or whatever we believe in. So whenever you think a negative thought toward another person, it's like you're, you're putting a psychic curse on them. You're sending negative energy at them and it can affect them. Now, so, so I, when a person comes... I try always to... Because I, I know for a fact I have made things happen just by having bad mm -hmm. thoughts about people. People who have done things to me. Um, so I try to think positive about people in situations all the time. Yeah. I know I can, I know I have caused things to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I mean, but it's just, you're aware of it, right? Most people aren't aware, but now I'll tell you about it. <laughs> if, so if a person comes to me and they think they've got a curse on them and they're from Haiti or Africa or Countries where curses are part of the culture. I'm from China. I would definitely culture. Yeah, Nigeria, um, uh, different places. And I would say, where are you from? And they tell me, well, curses are part of Louisiana, even here. If you said Louisiana, um, but if you told me, like, I don't know, Mississippi, I don't know many people practicing curses there, right? So if, if, so, then I would say maybe it's a curse, but but what but these gypsies they tell people they got curses. Voodoo and well Santeria, but that's not really that's a different voodoo and 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 uh, well voodoo and witchcraft and black voodoo and black magic are not really a part of our culture. So I don't know any voodoo churches here. I've never seen one. So I'm sure in Haiti there's voodoo places you could go, and they are in New Orleans, right? But th those are part of the culture. I was in Mexico or Latin America. I don't know. I lived in Mexico. I'm just saying Mexico. It could be, I don't know what if Santeria is just a Mexican religion or if it's a Latin American religion. I'm not really sure. But if I was in Latin America, let's just say, and they said they thought they were cursed by Santeria, that would make sense. That's a, a very, a thing that could be practiced in that culture. Mm -hmm. But so you got to kind of put it into context, but usually it's a psychic curse. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they people come to me and they say, well, I say, where are you from? And they say, well, I lived in Kentucky and this psychic in Kentucky told me I had a voodoo curse. I said, how many hillbillies practice voodoo? I'm from Ohio. Like, I'm like, my God, was there a voodoo hillbilly cult in Kentucky? <laughs> Or West Virginia, I might offend some people, but I'm from Ohio, right? We, we are, no, no, you've been to Kentucky. There's an interesting part. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm from an, a place, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. And we definitely um, have a, you know, people outside of Charleston always say women from Charleston, we witches, we right? voodoo, all these different things. It, we're definitely... It's in the culture. It's definitely in the culture. Right, right, right. And that could make sense. Um, and stuff like that. A lot of the people, like you said, they have passed on and they really didn't pass things down to family. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And I didn't include witchcraft in that because witchcraft is an earth religion. It's not, you know, they've lumped it all in with black magic. No, it's an earth religion. It's a beautiful religion. So it's not, it's not connected it's not with it. Uh, it's, it's natural. It's, it's regular. Not evil. It's yes, not it is. It's very natural. That's right. That's right. But there's a lot of misconception about it. Yeah.
my mom's ex-boyfriend, he used to tell her to like put red clay in a line in front of the door so it would keep... Well, that's probably stuff he learned growing up from his family or, or stuff like that. That's probably a little different than somebody that's, you know, cutting a chicken's head and letting the blood drip and then, you know, making a potion and dance around a fire and putting on a mask and doing a, you know, speaking in tongues like they do in voodoo. And I've always wanted to attend one of those. I just thought it'd be very interesting. But uh, yeah, that's different. But yeah, people. Ashley, Ashley will take you. <laughs> huh? I said Ashley will take you to one. Well, I'd love to. I've always wanted to go to Haiti or Africa. And I always wanted to go and, and experience. I just wanted to see a voodoo ritual. I thought it'd be very interesting. It doesn't scare me. I just thought it'd be very fascinating to watch. Oh. I'll get out there and dance with them. <laughs> <laughs> so you see anybody else around me? Any other good news? No, I, I, that's really, those are pretty, I'm looking, there's, that's predominantly the messages that, you know. I love that message. Me too. Pardon me? I received that message. I received that message too. Yeah, because it's really, you guys are not on a bad, you're, you're in a good, the worst part for both of you is behind you. So, yeah. From here forward, 2021 for both of you is going to be a very good year. This is going to be a year of positive change, positive energy for a lot of people. 2021 is a year of new beginning. It's kind of interesting that all this COVID stuff happened leading into 2021. And as we're coming to the middle, it's starting to, you know, they're finding more and more and it's starting to become it's event, not very far off future. We're going to get back to normal. We'll still be wearing masks probably. Well, some yeah. states won't. I'm seeing, probably still going to wear a mask out. Pardon me? I said, I'm probably still going to wear a mask out. Yeah, me too. But there's some people that are trying to pass laws where they don't. That's good for them. I just don't want to visit there. But there was a, <laughs> there's a, uh, yeah. But there's, yeah. So it's going to get better though. So we're, we're in a year of, of change, new beginning healing this is a healing year and it's just interesting how all this stuff is happening because mm -hmm. i predicted the coronavirus last year before it hit and then i also predicted that we would start seeing in, as we get into summer things would start getting back to normal more so it's just this natural cycle did you do you feel like uh sylvia brown was a true cycle? yeah yeah i miss sylvia i didn't know her but I really kind of feel a void since she's been gone. I didn't know much about her. I wasn't really that interested in her. I've seen her a few times, but when she died, I feel like, wow, I wish I had been more into I wish I had actually went to see her speak mm -hmm. and stuff because I think that she had a good soul. Yeah, she was very real. And I like that about her. She was very real. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I yeah, I really know. liked her. I really liked her. Sylvia mm -hmm. Brown, she used to be on like a lot of shows and stuff. And yeah, she, she was really probably the most famous psychic, mm -hmm. at least in at that time. At that time, she was. Hmm. Yeah. Well, this has been so much fun. I don't know. Well, I've enjoyed it too. Hope we can do it again. I, I might call you on the phone. Right. You, you absolutely know, can. Come to San Diego, I have drinks. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you can bring those ghost dollars. We'll find somewhere to spend them. <laughs> You're going to need more than 40 on the night with me. <laughs> we already You're going to live high on the hog. No, 40, bucket, 40 ghost dollars ain't going to get us nowhere. <laughs> no, not very far. We know. Her husband's going to pay for it, though. So okay. Right, right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've had a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Okay. Talk, 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 talk. talk to him.